Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. My name is Candace St. James. Thanks for coming back. And I welcome you back to season two. And uh, today I wanted to decide, I decided I wanted to go ahead and do a, what's called a sugar daddy robe. And if you are actually one of those ladies that just want to feel sexy, just want to feel fun, just want to have something nice to wear, um, you can do see-through, you can do something that's not so see-through for every casual, everyday casual wear. I will show you how to make it today. So we are making a sugar daddy robe. And I'm so excited to show you guys. And so one, two, three, let's get fabulous! So before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And click that bell button at the bottom of the screen. I know it's down there somewhere. I would totally love to go ahead and see that you like this video and hear from your input on it. And so, and I always love when you guys come back to my channel. It keeps me motivated to keep going. And so I, I just really, I'm just really excited that you guys keep coming back. And so um, please enjoy the show. Let's get started. So this is the finished look of what I've done. I used a tool that had this sequiny be uh, beading to it and it was in a fallen leaf shape. I was kind of inspired by a weeping willow. And then I also used it with some pink feather boas. And I used probably about four of them or so. The fabric itself is basically made out of tulle and it's like a backing to like a quinceanera dress. So it's like a facing to a quinceanera dress. And I was really just inspired by that. And so I'm like, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. And so we're gonna go ahead and show you how to make this. So I know it sounds kind of remedial, but in this basic sewing lesson, we have these open parts in the front right here. And these are called darts. And the way that we do it is we go ahead and we, we we fold both sides together and then we sew a diagonal line and then at the very top part we tie a knot. Um, that's going to form what's called our boobicles, girls or guys. That's called our boobicles. And so we are going to go ahead and, and start out by making the top part which is going to be forming the bust. And so that's going to give us the boobs and we are going to start sewing the top part of the robe itself. I know what you are thinking and you're probably thinking that the bodice is too small and normally in all reality this was a uh, pattern that was kind of suited for either a dress or a, uh, a wrap dress or whatever and so I ended up going and using the same one and um, in order to keep with the motif of the fallen leaves and all that I had to go ahead and make them in little uh, chunks and little patterns into smaller patterns and so basically um, I'm going to be sewing uh, seams down the waistline as well. So yeah, that's why it's a little bit smaller. So whenever making garments, the first thing you want to do is make sure you keep your fingers away from the needle. And then the second thing is you want to make sure you are back stitching um, at the very top, at the very end of your fabric pieces that you are sewing together. So it'll lock your stitches in place. If you go ahead and you just make a straight stitch all the way through and you just finish the outfit, um, your stitches are more likely to come out. And so right here, we're just clipping off the edges and making it look really pretty. And then we're gonna go ahead and get started with the next section. So right here in this part, I know it doesn't have a really good view, but this is what we are doing. We are taking, we are sewing that diagonal line on this bodice right here to form the boobs. And so then we are tying a small double knot in at the very top to hold in the to go ahead and hold in the uh, stitches for the for the dart and that's just the very common way to do it I did forget to mention that we are going ahead and sewing this at a half an inch seam allowance. And so when you, a good food for thought is once you run over through the sewing machine, your piece of fabric and you have that little um, part that you have what's called selvage. And it's the area where the, that is sewed, but you didn't go ahead and use that area. You can go ahead and trim that off and that helps reduce weight in the overall garment. So now we are going to go ahead and put right sides together and we are going to go ahead and sew a straight stitch all the way through the center front. And this is basically your center front seam. Um, so we are going to do, we're going to be sewing the waistbands together to form that, that very long front part. And that is exactly what we're doing. We're just doing a, a straight stitch and we are going to be 
back stitching at the very beginning and at the very end to hold the stitches in because with tool or at least with this fabric this fabric really wanted to come undone really easily so we're going to make sure we're back stitching on this one so if you're using a tool like this or also if you're using a different kind of mesh whatever make sure whatever you do whatever kind of fabric you're using you're back stitching at the very beginning and at the very end because what happens is some of your seam will come undone until you actually hit the back stitching part and then everything is locked in place it's pretty straightforward but make sure you always lock your stitches because otherwise your garment will just fall apart over time and just so you know i also wanted to also spare you guys the pain and scrutiny because um I cannot stand watching YouTube videos where they're sewing and they have a lady that fast forwards through the whole sewing machine process and keeps the volume there. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's silent and I'm just going to be voicing over so you can hear the sultry sounds of my voice. Yes. And that's all we have to do is just sew a straight stitch and then back stitch at the very beginning at the very end and then we just clip off the ends and then we have a full front piece. And since we have two pieces of this, we gotta do this for, we have to do this twice. So off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and be doing the other side as well. So make sure you guys have two pieces of this and you guys are gonna be doing, you guys are gonna be making sure you guys do two straight stitches along this waistline because that's gonna bring it all together. So now we're taking the two back pieces and we are gonna go ahead and be sewing down the center back seam. And that's just gonna close up this. It's an extremely large piece of fabric and so I'm gonna be making a straight stitch all the way down the, the back end and we're going to sew it all up together. Another good piece of advice is that whenever you sew just take your time it doesn't need to be on the fastest setting and it doesn't necessarily need to be on the slowest setting. Do it at a space or do it at a pace that you are comfortable with because um, that way you can maintain your lines and make sure that they're straight and stuff like that. Um, and you also want to look for plate for things when your machine starts uh, jamming up and stuff You can also spot those at the pace that you're actually comfortable with So don't worry about having to get your outfit done in two days or three days Sewing is supposed to be fun. So go ahead and make sure you are just taking your time and just enjoying the whole relaxing pace of just sewing So I'm just sewing that center back seam together right now and it's harder to tell right now that I'm actually what I'm actually doing. I'm just sewing a straight stitch at a half an inch down. Everything is a half an inch on this because that's how I made my mannequin, um, or that's how I made the, des the design on my mannequin. So um, we just go straight down, but it's a very long uh, stitch. So I'm gonna need all the space that I can get. So that's why you don't see it very much on the camera itself. This is indeed a very long, long stitch, and so make sure at the very beginning you are locking your stitches because this will come undone on tool. And so at the very end, right, we're at the very end right now, and so we're just gonna be back stitching pretty soon, and we're gonna be pulling it back. There you go. And we're gonna be tearing this off. And I just want to make sure that uh, you guys know to make sure you guys back stitch your guys' stuff because it will come undone eventually. And especially on a performance, you do not want it coming undone. But this is a very big piece. So now since we're done with that part, we are going to go ahead and put the 
front piece onto the back piece and we're going to do um, right sides kissing each other and we're going to start out by gluing or sorry not, not gluing but we're going to start out by sewing down the sleeves uh, the sleeve straps right here and so that's going to hold everything in place and be way easier to go and get the center of the uh, seam on the other side seam on so once in place on the first strap go ahead and do the other one because once you go ahead because you're dealing with a large piece of fabric it makes it really a lot much easier to have something actually sewed down so when you do the side seams you can just easily pin it and you always want to pin I always encourage you guys to pin your guys' uh, big pieces that you guys are doing and this is a very big piece of fabric since we're just now starting to see a robe at the beginning of a robe now we want to go ahead and start doing the side seams it's again a very long stitch so make sure you guys are back stitching where needed at the very beginning at the very end because you do not want any part of this to come undone um, and so just make sure that um, just make sure you guys are having fun just go at your own pace and just enjoy and make sure your lines are straight and just have a good time with it so to finish it off, we will be hemming the inside of it as well as adding a piece of ribbon around the waistline to close it up. So once the robe is actually complete, this is the part where it's super, super tedious. It's going to take a long, long time, but we're going to be attaching uh, three feather boas and we're going to be attaching them to the sleeves. We're also going to be attaching them to uh, the bottom part of our garment. And so you, the way you do this is not by machine, but you have to, yes, I'm sorry, you have to hand sew it. And so the best way to do it is you start on, you start by tying a knot. And because I am using a, uh, because I'm using a tool fabric, the holes are wider and a single knot on a piece of string will not work or not suffice. So I have to typically double or triple my knots um, just to make it actually stay in place because it'll come right through with the, uh, the other side of the fabric. And you just sew, you put the, uh, you put the feather boa on the, on the right side of the fabric and then you just sew like you're sewing a pair of pants that you don't really know how to sew and you can go ahead and put them really close and then you can um, also distance them apart every now and again. So it'll keep you get it'll keep getting you further, but you are gonna later on, and this is what nobody tells you what uh, tells you at the end. But you're gonna have to go ahead and judge the feathers back into place because these strings will get intertwined with them, and so you have to judge them out. And um, so that's how you get this beautiful rope. I swear this process took so stinking long. It took like it took for me at sitting here. It took. I would say probably about a day and a half if I was just consider I mean, if I was just consistent consistently sitting there all day, it would take about a day and a half. Um, but because I work and all that stuff outside of outside of YouTube, I did this in my own spare time. So it's, this took like four hours to to do, and that is no lie. Um, you will spend every minute of it doing it. So this is the finished look and this is what it comes out and looks like. I, for monetization purposes and for modesty purposes, I decided to put this on my mannequin and not on me because ain't nobody going to be seeing my boobicles hanging out. I really did enjoy how it, it turned out. I ended up stitching the inside seams of the uh, garment and then I also went and also put a neutral color on as far as the ribbon to close it off because I did not have a lavender or pink which would I'm gonna change out in the future so this is how you make a sugar daddy robe I personally did not wear it because it is see-through and so for YouTube purposes and for monetization purposes I decided to go ahead and not put it on but it totally fits just saying I just want to go ahead and, and show you that this is the easiest way to go do it um, when you use mannequins you can pretty much make anything you want as long as you map out the the parts where you need to go map out making any outfit becomes very easy and so I just want to go and show you guys how easy it really is to go ahead and get the get the desired look that you want, the desired costume you want, because 
that's what we're all about doing, is we're all about making something fresh and some, making something different that somebody else has never seen. And that's that's where I'm kind of going at it with versus buying clothes. Like when you buy clothes at like Forever 21 or whatever, everyone has it, everyone sees it, you know? There's That's the biggest difference is you make something that no one's seen and no one can get right away. And so, and it's, it's made to only your, to your specific measurements. And so that is one thing, that's one reason why I like making costumes on as far as on a mannequin. And I will show you guys how I actually go ahead and do it. So if you guys really like this video, please give a like, comment, and then also subscribe and just tell me that you're here. And you know, um, I'm, I'm making more videos now and I'm actually super excited. COVID's been kind of crazy. We've been, we've been on hiatus for a little while and that's the only reason why is because everything's not really readily available. And so we're just doing things as we see them and, and as we get a chance to. So um, please like, comment, subscribe, and thank you so much for coming back. And I really appreciate you guys. Thanks.